Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to talk to you about installing limit switches to the 3018 CNC machine. I'll show you where I've installed them, how I did the wiring and how I set all that up in a new software package that I've been using called Universal G-Code Sender. Limit switches aren't essential on these machines, particularly if you're working with quite small stock, but as you start to work on larger cuts, it's never a bad idea to ensure that your machine doesn't try and go beyond its physical limits. This generally reduces the risk of burning out any motors or other components on your main board. So let's jump into it. All right, so here's the machine. I have three limit switches set up. I have one up here on the Z axis. I also have another one down here at the back on the Y axis. And I have another one back here on the X axis on one of those third rail mounting brackets. Now, if you wanted to, you can set up six limit switches. So you could have one this side and one that side. You could have one on the top and one on the bottom. And you could also have one at the back here and one at the front as well. I'm not gonna do that because you don't really need to. As long as you've got three and you know the maximum travel distance of the machine, you'll be able to have your hard limit on the one side and your soft limit on the other side. So taking a closer look at the switches themselves, you can see that I managed to mount them on the existing parts of the machine. I was able to do this quite easily by drilling out some tiny pilot holes and then using some M3 bolts to bolt the switches into place. For the Y axis, I designed and printed this little part that would allow the switch to sit high enough so that the bed would come back and hit it. As for the wiring, you simply solder up the two wires as shown here. The wiring's the same for all three axes and then the wires of each individual switch come up to the main board where they're mounted into the correct positions. You'll see on the main board there are pin headers labeled for each of the individual switches. As I said, you can do up to two switches per axis, but we've only got one switch per axis here. Just connect the switches up and you should be good to go. You can't go too wrong really because the switch just returns the signal sent out by the microcontroller. All right, so now let's take a look at Universal G-Code Sender. And this is where you can go and download it. It's open source, it's all available. What you'll wanna do is come to this page, come down and you'll see a download section here where you want to download the latest release for whichever platform you're working on. Simply click on it, it'll open up a new window and your file should start to download. If it doesn't start downloading, click this little drop down and just select again your desired platform. Once you've downloaded it, open the folder, you'll want to go into bin and select, if you're on a 64-bit machine, obviously UGS platform 64. So right click that, run as administrator, and when you open it up, you should see something like this. Now, as soon as I open the software, I like to rearrange things a little bit. So if you notice down here on the bottom left, there are three tabs. We've got toolbox, job controller, and macros. So I like to take the job controller and drag that up somewhere over here to the right, just so that you've got both of those in view at once, because you can use the toolbox here to sort of stop the machine or home the machine and your jog controller allows you to manually move it around. I won't take you through everything here but I'll show you the basics that you need to get going. So as I said if you've used the previous software which would be Gerbil Control Candle you probably recognize this if you've already got a 3018 CNC as it comes with this software but all you have to do is just load into UGS and assuming you've got your drivers installed all you'll have to do is come up to the top here where it says port hit this refresh button and select whichever COM port your machine is on. Usually it'll select it automatically. And then you'll want to connect to the machine and there's a connect button up here. Just hit connect. You'll see that turn to an orange color and the machine will connect to the software. So just to show you the basics, obviously I can move the machine around. You can adjust your step size here. I've set mine to 10 millimeters. So let's move the X axis to the right. I'll click this button. And you can see, there we go, it's moving in steps of 10 millimeters. We can do the same with the Y axis as well. So if we bring that forward. And obviously the Z axis up and down. So it's just like the other software, you've got all your essential controls. And what I'll quickly show you as well is how to import G code. So if you come up to file, open, Select the file that you want. For this example, I'll just select this one for the spoil board video I just made. So I'm gonna open it. And what I like about this software is it actually shows you the G code inside of the package itself. So for example, if we move the G code down here next to the welcome page, 
you can actually go ahead and edit the G code right here and just run it straight from the software, which I think is really cool. You've also got a nice visualizer here on the right, which shows you the cut that you're gonna make. And in the bottom left, you've got your standard controls where we can do a soft reset. We can uh, reset our zeros and we can do check mode and get state, typical things you'd expect to see. So now let's talk about actually setting up your machine in this software package. So if you come up to the top here, it says machine, come down to set up wizard. Now in here, it'll take you through all the steps and it's quite a good guide. And it basically guides you through the whole process. So I'm just gonna click next. If your machine came with a settings file, you can import that here and it'll automatically apply the settings for you. In my case, I don't, so I'm gonna click next. Here you can set up your motor wiring to ensure it's all in the correct position. So for example, if I click on this X plus, the machine is slowly moving to the right and you can just validate those by checking them all. And if you need to reverse the direction, you can tick one of these boxes and that'll correct that for you. Next, we've got step calibration. I tend to leave this at default, but what you can basically do is set a distance to move. So I could set this to say be 10 millimeters to the right on the X axis. So if I hit that, it'll move 10 millimeters and then it'll ask you to measure on the machine how much the machine actually did move. And that will allow you to calibrate your steps to ensure the best accuracy on the machine. I do recommend going through this when you get time because it just improves the accuracy of your machine and it gives you confidence that the cuts you'll be doing are accurate. So the next step is the limit switches. Now, if you've installed your limit switches in the same way I have, you can click enable limit switches. So when you enable limit switches, you will see these three icons here for the X, Y, Z. And if you go ahead and press each of the limit switches, you should see these change color. And that just shows that the switch is registering and you'll be able to use it in the software. So then if we hit next, and here you'll wanna make sure that you define where your switches are positioned. So in my case, I installed a switch on the X axis on the left side. So I need to specify that my switch is on the negative X axis, so on the left. Same goes for the Y, I got a switch at the back, which is a negative Y value. And my Z limit switch is at the top of my Z axis. So I've set that to plus Z. Now, if you click try homing, that'll run a demo homing procedure for you. But I'm gonna show you that separately. So we're just gonna click next. And here are the soft limits that I talked about. So if you enable soft limits, so what this will do basically is it knows the position of your limit switches, right? It knows that's your zero point or your furthest point wherever you've placed them. So if you know the maximum travel distance of your machine, in my case I do, the maximum X travel distance is 300 millimeters, and the maximum Y travel distance is 180. And my machine in particular, because I've upgraded it, has a Z travel distance of around 40 millimeters. So what happens when you set these values is that your machine always knows where it is in relation to the limit switch. So it physically won't let you go past this point because you've set it up as a soft limit. And I'll give you a demonstration of that now. So let's hit finish. We should now be in a position to go through the homing procedure. So in the bottom left here under the toolbox tab, you'll see home machine. I'm gonna hit that and we'll watch the machine home itself and set its position. So there we go, you can see the machine homed itself there. So what we'd wanna do now is reset our zero points here on the toolbox menu. That sets our zero exactly at the point where the limit switches have just been released. And that way the machine knows that our soft limits are now gonna be based on this position. So you can see here on my X axis, as I said, the maximum travel distance of the machine is 300 millimeters. It's currently at position 298.5, which is millimeters. So the reason for that is that when you set the machine up, you can set a distance to release from the limit switches. So I've set mine to be 1.5 millimeters. So what happens is it goes over, hits the limit switch, and then releases the limit switch by moving back 1.5 millimeters. And you can play around with this value by going up to machine, firmware settings, and this will open up a box like this for you. Now in here, if you have trouble with the soft limits or if they're not enabling, you can come down to this box, soft limits enable, and make sure it's a one. 
A one means it's enabled and a zero means it's disabled. Sometimes you may need to change this and reboot the machine. And the next time you load it up, these values will be applied. Just make sure that when you make the edit, you hit enter on the keyboard and that will assign the value for you. Now the value I was talking about, 1.5 millimeters, that's this one. So we've got a homing switch pull off distance. Depending where you've mounted the switches, it might take a little bit more for you to achieve this or a little bit less. So we'll start at 1.5 and play around with it. You know, you might need two, you might need 1.75 to see what works for your machine. There's also other parameters in here that you can play around with, such as acceleration. And again, you can adjust that maximum travel in here as well. But we did that through the setup wizard, which basically assigns these values for you. So if you make any changes, just hit save. That'll save those out for you. And now just for demonstration purposes, what I'll do is I'll try and move the Z axis down as far as I can. If you've tried to do this without limit switches, you'll know that it gets to the bottom and it'll just make a horrible noise as the motor stalls because obviously it can't travel any further. So let's move the Z axis down. I'm gonna go right to the bottom. And there we go. You can see if I try and go any further, the software's giving me an error and it's saying, my target exceeds machine travel. So it won't physically let me go beyond that point, which protects your motors and your electronics. So let's try and do that for the X axis as well. So if I move that 300 millimeters to the right, we should get a warning at the end that says you've exceeded your distance. So let's try it. So as we move the X axis over, you can see in the top left here, the machine is jogging and it tells you how much distance it's traveled. So let's go ahead and move that all the way across. So there you go, you can see I'm trying to move an extra 10 mil, which will take me to my limit. So if I step this down, make it smaller, I move across one millimeter at a time. You can see there, I can get all the way to 298 before it tells me, you know, you're approaching that limit. We can't make it go any further. And that's exactly what you want. So as I said, play around with this. Every machine is slightly different. And you know, if you're using a completely different machine to the 3018 CNC, you might need to make a few other tweaks here and there, but it's all practice and experimentation. You've just got to find what works best for you. So one other thing I'll mention as well is that if the software detects an alarm, which is essentially a warning, it means you've either hit your soft limit or your limit switch, which is a hard limit. So what you'll need to do is just click unlock here in the toolbox. That'll disable the alarm and you'll want to do a soft reset as well. And uh, once you've done that, you can rehome the machine or just return to your zero point. So I'm going to rehome it again. It'll go through that exact same process that it did before. I'll find this zero position, we can set it, and then we'd be ready to make any cuts. So once you've homed the machine, you've set your zero points. What you can do now is if you wanted to do a cut, we go up to file, open, select whatever G code you want to import. I'm just going to use this one, which was for my spoil board video last week. I'm going to hit open. If you wanted to make any changes to the G code manually, you could do that here. And I can actually show you a demo cut just by dummying the Z height. So I'm just going to pretend here that this is my Z height. And now all we'd have to do is hit the send button up in the top left. And you can see that the machine will proceed to make a cut. Obviously here we're not cutting anything, but you can see this is how the software works. And it's really easy to get up and running. If mid cut you want to stop everything, there's a stop button up here. That'll hold the machine for you and from there you can either start it again or go ahead and reset your parameters. So as you can see, this is quite a nice little software package. It's a lot cleaner and just more presentable than Candle in general. It allows you to customize a lot more things and one of the things I love the most is this firmware settings tab because typically with Candle what you'd usually have to do is edit like a text file or something like that. This just loads it all in here for you. And it has a setup wizard, which is, you know, good. It's fairly easy to understand and it guides you through the process. So definitely go check this out. I'll leave links to everything in the description below. Let me know how you get along with it. Or if you already use something else, let me know what software you use. And maybe I'll have a look at that as well. So that's it for this one. This limit switch video has been a long time coming. I've had the machine a while. And I just never got around to installing them. But given that I'm starting to work on larger projects on the machine, it made sense to install them. So I thought I'd share that with you as well. Remember, any CAD files that I showed in this video are available to website members. So if you appreciate my content and you want to support me directly, head over to the website, become a member. You will gain access to all those files and also my Fusion 360 for Beginners course. 
really helps the channel out and I appreciate it a lot. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.